It's not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. TCP congestion window is an important mechanism for ensuring that the efficient and reliable transmission of data over the network, while also helping to prevent the network congestion and ensure that network remains stable and responsive. It also addresses TCP known problem, that is TCP allows a potential inappropriate burst of traffic to be transmitted after the TCP has been idle for a relatively long period of time. Hello friends, my name is Sabi and in today's video we'll be discussing about TCP congestion control. So in this video we'll see that how slow start and congestion avoidance work and what is the congestion window CWND and another state variables like slow start threshold. RFC 5681 defines TCP congestion control and there are four TCP congestion control algorithms where slow start, congestion control, fast retransmit and fast recovery. So let's deep dive in congestion control mechanism of TCP. So congestion is unavoidable. When two packets arrives at the same time, the node transmit only one packet and the other packet will get dropped or buffered. When similarly, too many packets are transmitted and the node cannot keep up the arriving traffic and the buffer may be eventually overflow. Here we will understand the terminology which will be used in our future references. So first is the sender maximum segment size. The largest segment the sender can transmit, this value is based on the maximum transmission unit, the MTU or the path MTU discovery algorithm. SMSS, which is sender maximum segment size, can be compared to the maximum weight allowance for your suitcase. Let's say you are traveling in a airlines and the airlines baggage policy allow a maximum weight of 20 kilograms for check baggage. When the data is transmitted over a network using TCP, it divided into segments for efficient transmission. The sender determines the size of the segments based on the sender maximum segment size, which is SMSS. And the receiver sets its RMSS, which is receive maximum segment size value to indicate the maximum segment size it can handle. So TCP MSS, value sent by the receiver during the connection setup in TCP option field. If no MSS is being used, then the default is 536 bytes. So the receiver maximum segment size is like a maximum amount of water you can comfortably drink in one sip from a water bottle. To know more about TCP three-way handshake, you can check my 3CP three-way handshake video. You can click on the I button in the top to get into that video. So next is congestion window CWND. So the congestion window plays a crucial role in determining the amount of data sender can transmit over the network without overwhelming it. The congestion window is like the number of cars you are allowed to have on the highway at the given time without causing a congestion. Initially, when you start your journey, you are allowed to have a small number of cars on the road to ensure smooth traffic flow. And this can be compared to gradually widening the pipe opening and allowing more water to flow control. As data is transmitted and acknowledgements are received, the congestion window grows. This can be compared to a gradually widening the pipe opening, allowing more water to flow through. The sender can then transmit more data, increasing the data flow rate. So the send window is an internal limit on how the sender can send at once before an act received. It never get advertised in any of the messages during the three-way handshake or in, the, in TCP. So basically, it's from the sender side, how much data 
can be transmitted before an act was received back, which is opposite to the TCP receive window. Receiver window RWND, this is advertised during the three-way handshake. And the goal of the receive window is to ensure that the sender does not transmit data faster than the receiver can process it. So it will prevent data loss or congestion. So by managing the receive window size, the receiver controls the flow of data and maintains an efficient and reliable transmission. The receive window, RWND, is a fundamental concept in TCP that has been used for flow control during the data transmission. It represents the amount of data that a receiver is currently willing to accept from the sender without sending an acknowledgement. So the receive window dynamically adjusts during the TCP connection based on the various factors such as buffer space, network congestion, and processing capability of the receiver. It helps to regulate the flow of data between the sender and receiver, preventing data loss and ensuring efficient and reliable data transmission. The receive window is like the available space in your truck cargo area where you will load the goods for transportation. It represents the maximum capacity of goods you can accept at a given point of time. To understand the TCP receive window, you can ch check my previous video that is based on TCP receive window. So initial window, it is a size of the sender congestion window after three-way handshake is completed. So how many segments it will send just after the three-way handshake? This is what the initial window is. As data is transmitted and ACK is received, the congestion window gradually grows. Initial window is like the number of cars that are initially allowed to pass through the signal when it turns green. It represents the maximum number of data segments that can be sent by the sender. The so next is the flight size, or you can say that data in flight. So data in flight in TCP refers to data segment that has been sent but not yet acknowledged, representing the data currently traversing the network between the sender and receiver. So the data in flight is like an airplane that is currently in the air carrying passenger from the departure city to the destination city. So these passengers represent data segments that has been sent but not yet been acknowledged by the receiver. The slow start and congestion avoidance algorithm must be used by TCP sender to control the amount of data that been injected from the sender side to the receiver side. So to implement this algorithm, two variables are added to the TCP per connection state. So the congestion window CWND is a sender limit on the amount of data the sender can transmit into the network before receiving an ACK. So while at the receiver side, so receiver will advertise the RWND, which is receiver window, is a receiver limit on the amount of outstanding data it has. So the minimum of the CWND, the congestion window, and the RWND, which is the receive window, governs the data transmission. So another state variable is there that is slow start threshold, SS thresh, is being used to determine whether the slow start or the congestion avoidance algorithm is being used to control the data transmission. So during the slow start phase, TCP increases the send rate exponentially. It sends two segments in the very first flow after the three-way handshake. Once the receiver receives, it will send an ACK. Once ACK being received at the sender side, it will increase the segment to four. This is what is called as exponential increase and doubling the CWND once it receives an ACK from the receiver side. So this allows the TCP to probe the network quickly and utilize the available bandwidth. However, on as the sending rate increases, this is a risk of overwhelming the network and causing the congestion 
at any side of it. To mitigate this risk, TCP employs the SS thresh, which is slow start threshold. And this slow start threshold is basically being used for the congestion control mechanism. Whenever we talk about slow start threshold value, it is initially set to the predefined default or based on network characteristics. As TCP send data segments, it tracks the number of unacknowledged segments and monitor for any sign of congestion such as packet loss or RTO, retransmission timeout. Basically, the SS threshold is being used to control the exponential growth of the traffic. So the traffic is growing exponentially to a certain point. It will grow till it will reach the SS thresh. And based on the SS thresh, once it reach from there, it will not grow like exponentially what it is being grown here. So it will be a linear growth for that after that. So this is how we employing the SS thresh being used for the congestion control mechanism. What all we covered so far is SMSS, which is sender maximum segment size. We covered about receiver maximum segment size. We covered about congestion window, receive window. We covered about data in flight and initial window and SS thresh. So in our next video, we will put all the concept together and analyze how congestion avoidance and slow start works under the hood. Thank you so much.